Hey there! Just another update from Jim's Fish Room here in lovely Beverly, New Jersey in the U.S. And we're looking here as we usually are at the beginning of these updates uh, at the corner tank. And uh, not a whole lot new here. Yeah, that goldfish is still there and getting bigger and got beautiful finnage on it. Next chance we get it's going out into my sister Maggie's pond where it can grow to full size and get out of this tank. But look at those neons. Aren't they beautiful? I don't think the camera does them justice. Right now, as I'm looking at them, they truly are neon lights. Blue and red, and they're just gorgeous. I couldn't be more pleased. I'm feeding them uh, frozen baby brine shrimp on a regular basis. And that's certainly bringing out some of the color. The garden, as always, is lush and green. Uh, the Amazon sword in the back is nice and big. You can see that right there. I've got a new way of pointing uh, things out to you. And then if you go over to this side, you see that Madagascar lace plant that has had such narrow leaves these last couple updates are now broadening out. You see how broad that leaf is now? It's really done well. And so it's in... I'm counting them now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten leaves on that Madagascar lace plant. And I was afraid it was going to go into its dormant state because it lost the other leaves. But these narrow ones came back. And you'll see the narrow ones right in the front. But then they started just recently broadening out. Remember I was saying how disappointing it was that they were not... Uh, they, they weren't wide. They were on the small side, and I didn't know why. And so you can see how broadleaf that one plant is now. And so there's 25 neons in here, and I couldn't be more pleased. That school has maintained its size over time. I was losing, you know, if I put 10 in there to add to the school that was there, uh, next thing I know, there'd only be five of those ten left. What I really am pleased with, as you can see down in the front here, the corkscrew ballastinaria are propagating. And you can see their baby plants right here in the front. And so that's doing very well. So I've got a little forest of ballastinaria, which is very nice. And then that other one that I introduced you to last time, right there. You can notice it by its curly leaves. That's doing well now and it's got, I'm looking at it, oh, one, two, three, there's another ten nice long leaves on that at this point. As you can see they go quite a ways up. And so those are really taken off and then of course we have the other part of that. You remember uh, there was a second plant buried in the one that I bought, and there it is now. It's growing up nicely, too. It's only got about five leaves on it so far, but it's obviously well-rooted and growing nicely. And the other story that we've been following has to do with this ap apigon or some, something very colorful, Ludwigia-type plant, but it's not Ludwigia. Uh, and this is some harvesting from the main plant. Uh, this is the one I got up at Discus Madness. And you recall that I was disappointed because you didn't get the whole plant. They merely clipped off stems from it. And for like $8 I got the stems and I thought, oh geez. But it has really gone well. And you'll see that in the bow tank. It's grown out nicely there. And this is some clippings from that which are taking off and, as you can see, growing up nicely. The other thing I want to point out to you here, and I did something just yesterday when I was changing some water here. Uh, remember that flowering from the Amazon sword? It's right there, okay? That plant, or that flower, if you will, this was a short one that's still staying in the water. Two others developed, and they came out of the water by about, oh, I'm going to say, eight to ten inches worth. And uh, 
nothing fancy, but there was definitely a flowering effect there. And so yesterday I finally said, you know, this is sapping energy from the mother plant. I'm going to just go ahead and uh, do away with it. And I snapped them off. And it was like snapping off asparagus in terms of the stem was so hard that when you uh, bent it after I took it off, uh, it was able to snap it in just uh, two or three pieces. And I was quite surprised at how strong that was. Like I said, like you would snap asparagus, you can actually hear the snap. And then, of course, the banana plants are doing very well. You see a couple of those green um, barbs still doing well. And right down in the corner here, and this was kind of interesting, uh, this is the Indian algae eater I have. Three of them. One's here in this tank and two in the other tank. And the other day I was uh, working on that other tank and I had the top off and all of a sudden I thought I th felt something move uh, but I didn't see anything and it turned out after I got through doing what I was doing I looked down and there it is on the floor one of these fish came right out of the water out of the tank onto the floor reached down picked them up put them back in there and uh, he's doing just fine we have another forest of valves over here these are Italian valves I believe the Kabamba is doing well in the background. I've just clipped all that because there is a Pleco in here that's too big. I really do have to get rid of it. He's uprooting everything when he uh, gets around to it. And so I come in the morning and find the Kabamba all over the place. And so there's no new fish in here at this point from last time. Uh, just enjoying very much the very colorful neons and a bunch of libraries in here. The babies are surviving. Of course, they have quite a bit of plant growth to hide in. And uh, they are getting well into uh, their teenage stage, if you will. And so they're surviving, you know, not by the hundreds, but uh, certainly enough that you don't have to look for them. They're all over the place. And so that's the uh, corner tank. Again, my pride and joy, the Madagascar lace plants, both here and what you're going to see in the other tank. Okay, here on the bow tank, uh, again, a 50 gallon tank, it is a beautiful, lush garden. So, this fertilization program of liquid CO2 and leaf zone, uh, CO2 every day, leaf zone once a week or when I change the water. And then, uh, on a quarterly basis, putting in some root tabs uh, for the roots of these plants. But now you can see how beautiful this layout has become. Uh, our only frustration is it's so crowded with plants that you can't really show off the plants you want. But here's the one thing I want to start out with. I'm talking about uh, the school of neons are finally thriving in this tank once we got rid of that great big upside down catfish. And so they look beautiful, and again, I don't think the camera's picking up the colors as vibrant as they are in my viewing them here. And so that blue line on the neon is just glowing, and the red, and again, these are growing nicely. Uh, when I got them home, they were smaller than I thought I was getting. I mean, obviously, they were in a big tank, but when I put them in here, I thought, oh, wow, they really are small. And so I've been feeding them the baby brine shrimp, and they've been growing up nicely. So there's, uh, I think it was 15 in here. And uh, what you also see right in this view, that plant, that reddish plant in the front is doing beautifully. I can't even count the number of leaves in that at this point. Uh, there's that colorful tricolored shark. We've got a couple of live bears in here. In fact, I was able to pick up last time at the fish factory over in Bristol, Pennsylvania, across the bridge from New Jersey here. Uh, a couple of sword tails. They're liar tail, long fin sword tails. And I see if I can catch one for you. Right there is one of the males. Among the red platies, okay? And that's not the best looking one, but it's the one that's out front that I can capture right now. And then in the center is that plant I was telling you about that we got at Disc Madness up in North Jersey. And you can see how beautifully that's growing out. Now, as I told you in an earlier video, 
the plant that they had in a huge, I'm going to say it was a 40 gallon tank. There was only one plant in it. It was that reddish plant you see in the center here. And it was so full, it was so big that I would have gladly spent a hundred dollars for it. Uh, and I, that was my guess. And when I asked him if they were to sell it, what would they sell it for? And he guesstimated how many plants he could get off of that. And he came up with a number like $90. And I swear if I had an empty tank, like Bruce is setting up 10 tanks, if I had a spare tank, I would have spent the $100. That was so beautiful a plant, not realizing how well that's going to grow here. And so that's growing out nicely. And as you saw, the trimmings uh, that I just took off it for the other tank a couple weeks ago are growing nicely. And I took a couple of the longer stems from this one uh, just yesterday and put them down in the base again. So I'm trying to thicken this one out much like they had in their tank. Now the thing that's really blown me away, and check this out. Look at that plant, the, the beautiful thin light green, lime green leaves are so curly and beautiful. And I'm going to guess there's about 20 stems of that. And that's grown out since the last time we did this, which was about two weeks ago. And what's happening here is the ta that tank, that plant, much like the red one, is a show plant. It belongs in the tank by itself just to stand out. And I don't have room to do that. And then just to the right is again my all-time favorite, the Madagascar lace plant. And this one has got, it's hidden almost under that curly plant. But it's got uh, right now no less than a dozen beautiful leaves on it. And these are the leaves that I usually see. And I was surprised that corner tank, as the plant was replacing its leaves, they were coming up as narrow leaves. And I thought, what the heck is this? And just recently, after I'd say a month or so, uh, they started to broaden and become full size. The red wag platies certainly give this tank some nice color to offset from those blue garamis you see in the front. Uh, the angelfish, surprisingly enough, I still have two young ones here, and there may be a third young one. I'm not totally sure. Uh, I added three small ones to the two we had in there. One of the two we had in there from my brother-in-law passed away. The, the fish passed away, not my brother-in-law. And uh, I know I lost at least one of the three medium size. That black one you see up in the left hand corner. Okay, is one of those three. And right this minute I don't see the other two. So I'm not sure there's the other one that I got from him, that grayish one. So you can see at least two of the five angels we had in here. And I still don't know what the problem is with this particular tank. And that's the only tank I've had angels in. And maybe I need to uh, try them out. Well, I, I'm sorry. I had, did have the big, beautiful, large black angels in uh, the corner tank one time, and they all died at the same time within a couple of days of each other. What a loss that was. And there's that Indian algae eater right down in the front, heading back a little bit. Got a nice collection of catfish in here now. We also have down on the right-hand side here that uh, lily plant. And that's got about two or three very fragile uh, leaves on it, one of which is floating at the top. I'm not sure what you're going to be able to see from this view, but you can see where that stem goes up, and there it is. The stem is so fragile, so delicate would be the right word, okay? But it's a beautiful plant, and some of the leaves stay low so you can see them as you just did, and then others get up to the surface and then float. The pearl gouramis continue to do well. I've got two young ones in the corner tank and you see at least the one up front here uh, doing well here. There's another one in the back of the three I think I had in here at one point in time. And so uh, things are doing well. Uh, I don't see the red-tailed shark that I always try to show off when I'm here. The young Amazon swords that you see in the foreground are doing well. And uh, the one I told you in the back there, oh, here I'll show you, 
that plant is not in the substrate. It's just sitting on a fixture back there and it's got all sorts of roots on it now that are absorbing nutrition from the water. And like I say, I'm putting leaf stone in that on a weekly basis. And then we have the uh, valves. I think they started with some that Bruce gave me down here in the left-hand corner. And so there's a forest of them. And again, they're sending off young ones. So things are really growing nicely here. We have some other plants hidden in the background that are doing okay. Uh, not able to show off too much, but you see some young plants coming up through the gravel. So that's always a good sign. And you have one small Amazon sword there, another one here. And as I showed you last time, back behind the Madagascar lace plant and that curly plant, uh, there's another nice one that we took out of the beta tanks. And then off to the right hand side, we have some more of those, those valves. So they sort of balance the view of the tank with those valves and they look very pretty. So all in all going very well here in the bow tank, in my fish room, which is our living room. And uh, there's some serpe in there. It's probably about five serpe. There's the one rainbow fish there. There was two, but one passed away a number of months ago. And uh, like I say, there's a good balance of catfish in there now. And there's, there's two bettas in here, two male bettas. Uh, one just died in the corner tank, so I have a red one left. The blue one passed away. But in here I have that white one, which doesn't come out that much anymore. My wife Pam swears she saw it just yesterday, so I know it's still in there. Uh, and the other one was another one I couldn't resist buying, which is uh, sort of a pinkish body with dark red fins. And uh, he's not out right now to be able to show you that again, but just to let you know he's doing well. And also what's doing well is the two beta tank, or the split beta tank. Those two bettas that I showed you last, I won't bother going there again. They're, they're doing just as well. And I've moved uh, the videos as you see them now onto a different channel. So they've got their dedicated channel as opposed to being mixed in with all those uh, church videos that I do each week. And so I've got to let people know that they're over here. And uh, there's one of those sword tails I was telling you about. You can see the finnage on it. That was uh, a very nice fish. I think I got about four of them, two males and two females, for a very reasonable price, like $3.98 a piece at the fish factory. So. I'll take you briefly into the office, but I've got to tell you right now that the office tank is just overcrowded with plants. Fish are doing well, and so it'll be a short visit. Don't want to waste your time there. Here in the office tank, uh, the water wisteria is still growing out nicely. I'd love to take one of each of these sprigs and put them in the other two tanks, but I don't have room to do that right now. And secondly, they're doing so well here, which is unusual. In the other tanks, they've tended to fall apart. Again, this is mostly live bears. Uh, there are two clown loaches that may come into the view at some point in time. But we have some very beautiful uh, guppies and some orange mollies. And some of them have a beautiful lyre tail to them. I haven't seen any really uh, nice looking sailfin mollies. I'm at a point where I'd like to get some of those back in. I haven't had them in years. But anyway, you can see the plant growth doing well here. Gets some natural light from the side of the tank. And uh, the fish do well in here. I've got one green so uh, pineapple sword down here that I moved in here back when the babies weren't doing so well in that corner tank. Uh, as far as survival goes. And I brought her here because she was very pregnant. So some of the babies in here, and there's quite a few babies hidden in all this plant work, are hers. And she's always pregnant, it seems. Always ready to give birth it. And so there she is there. And you see one of the catfish coming off in the background. There's about three or four catfish in here and the two clown loach. As soon as I put a um, algae tab in here we get a feeding frenzy right down in the front you can see that one catfish doing its thing uh, in fact while I'm talking let me add one of those tabs there and let's see how quickly the fish move in on it 
And so all I do is just drop one right down in front. And usually that creates a feeding frenzy very quickly. And everybody notices it, probably by the smell, very quickly. So let's see how quickly they get there. There's that catfish coming right up on it already. And all the others think they're being fed at the top, so they're all gathered in a big feeding frenzy up there. Those two guppies with the split tail, it's like an iridescent tail that you just saw off to the right, they are so pretty, and uh, they're doing very well. I'm curious to see if some of these babies that you see throughout here uh, come out with that. There's that sword tail again. And so, again, just very entertaining. I was tempted to get another one of those, I think they're five gallons, maybe it's ten gallon, uh, tank for the office here. So I'd have two more bettas that would sit on my desk exposed to the window. There's the clown loach. There's both clown loaches going after that uh, algae tab. Boy, they find that quick, don't they? And so as soon as they get in there, everybody else is going to be down there too. And it just becomes a feeding frenzy, as I call it. And here comes one of those mollies with the beautiful tail. They're right there. See it? So everybody likes the algae tabs, so I try to give them one a day. And uh, this this tank has probably at least 50 babies, mostly guppies, I'm sure, that I just leave alone. And there's enough growth in there to protect them, and not much going after them because they're pretty well fed. And so this one's doing well. And uh, with that feeding frenzy uh, going on, I'll try and move this over just a little bit for you. I don't know if that's going to work or not. No, with the glare, I can't get you much more than what you're seeing. So, again, I thank you for your visit. I hope you found the video, well, you obviously have found the video on this other channel. Otherwise, you wouldn't be sitting here seeing this. And uh, I appreciate your visit. Love sharing. And uh, we're going to have to do a video sometime soon, because last time I may have mentioned my friend Bruce up in uh, Metuchen, New Jersey, which is about central New Jersey, uh, he has that beautiful extra bedroom with uh, the four, one, two, three, four, you know, four beautiful tanks. Or maybe it's five. Anyway, he does a beautiful job with those. Well, he, at the age of 80-something, has decided he wants more, and so he's finishing off his basement and putting in at least 10 more 10-gallon uh, or 20-gallon tanks there, and then he wants to put a couple larger tanks. So sometime uh, when that gets up and running, I'll guarantee you I'll get the video up there and we'll see what happens there as he has some beautiful potential. If you have extra tanks like that, uh, you can have a species-only tank where you can focus on a particular plant in a tank. And uh, that's so cool to be able to do it. I'm not uh, uh, anxious uh, to have more tanks. I've got three that, well, four counting the better tanks uh, that keep me pretty busy. And uh, so I really don't want more, but at the same time, you got to be jealous of, like Ray, when he had, uh, I think we counted one time, 25 tanks he had, many of which were out of service, uh, but he had the option of cleaning up one of those tanks and adding fish to it when he found an opportunity. So anyway, hey, I said goodbye. Sorry, I didn't hang up. I will now. Happy fishing to you all. I told her when it comes to talking, I'm the sweetest sweet talker in the world. Well, she said you better start talking if you want me to be your girl. And she said, 